Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, so uh, we are working uh, very hard to collect all the pieces of information together, to collect the code together, and to come up with some final results. Basically, a notebook. Um, there are some kind of uh, doubts regarding what uh, the final product uh, should be like. Should it be like top pap papers or should it be more refined a uh, list of all papers that we found? But I think that it's, it will be a safer at the moment uh, to go for a top papers that were <clears throat> manually approved as relevant. And uh, basically, uh, we have a few uh, primary, primary concerns at the moment is to collect uh, the code, make out of this code a single notebook, uh, make sure that we do not miss any keywords and engrams that we used uh, during the process, and make sure we build a logical and complete picture for a first submission. Now, I want to share a vision with you for you to understand that uh, submission on 16th, it's not the final product and it's not the final aim of coronavirus organization. We actually see that things much broader. We can build an amazing product that can help people all over the world to access knowledge that is not really accessible today. And that is super important for, for medical uh, staff and for researchers, etc. So we will continue building the product. I've seen some amazing pieces of code provided by different uh, members. Unfortunately, Mangalosia is not here now, but he did, and Guillermo actually, they made some impressive pieces of code that are that require some more time to implement and like kind of work on, but this this code is absolutely amazing, and we will indeed use it in the future for kind of you know better version of our product. And now we are kind of on this uh, alpha version, which is for Kaggle submission, which is by all means not our final aim. Uh, the final aim is basically make, make the life of uh, people easier and especially make the life of researchers easier, uh, taking into consideration that the world might face uh, terrible crises like the one we face now. Um, in terms of current submission, uh, Kriti, I still need uh, your keywords. I don't think oh, yeah. I have them. I forgot right. them. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I have them in one place. Uh, and soon I have to tell you that your input is out of this world. Like, wow, <laughs> thank you. You do a lot. <laughs> and I wanted to ask for your advice. Do you think we are going for a top papers at this moment? Um, yeah, so I was talking about, uh, I was talking with uh, I'm on the um, NTATER uh, director about like how we're selecting um, all of these uh, papers, especially with like, okay, so we have coming out of the um, AI models, we have like a few papers coming out, right? But um, for getting the top most relevant papers, it's not enough to find word matches but also make sure that like, for example, the risk factor like population density is being portrayed as a risk factor. So for example, population density is correlated to or influences and it must also be like a central theme of the paper as well. So that, I, do, I don't know how we're gonna incorporate that, but in the long run, that would be a great thing to incorporate. Um, for now though, um, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> So listen, we have three days, including today, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, we must do the best, but what is important 
is to be accurate. Yes. And why it is important to be accurate, this is important to earn some credibility. This might be quite, quite an important point at the moment. Uh, it's probably less important to show how super machine learning, NLP and artificial intelligence it is, but to show that the results like that we kind of produce and give our ad end user, which is scientific community, and it's a White House call, okay, let's show them that we are capable of producing reliable, relevant results. Yes. That makes, I, th I think that at this point, that makes the most sense. And we can always say that we are still working on that, which is true. And we're still trying to uh, come up with a uh, more robust solution, which is, which is kind of normal, I assume. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I wanted to talk with Kevin because Kevin, you made some very impressive uh, work uh, working on uh, medical dictionaries that your your input is impressive and nobody really understands what did you do would you be so kind to explain us okay yeah sure so um basically uh i use the um it's the umls dictionary it's like the unified like medical language system um basically it uh does the same thing as the l it is the same thing as the lck but with medical knowledge um, it tokenizes it, extracts out the words that could possibly, in the case of being medically related, um, then from there, using essentially a linker in like an like the NLP uh, pipeline, it then compares any any of the um, uh, tokens to uh, essentially CUI, which is like a concept ID in terms of um, uh, Snowbed, which is essentially CT code. CT code is, is a, a one of the numerous medical dictionaries uh, that helps categorize um, uh, the terminology into a essentially numerical language. From a CUI, it converts it into an ICD, um, which is another form of medical dictionary, but this medical dictionary focuses on categorization. And so it splits codes into trees, so to speak. So you have like a branch, let's say like an I would be something related to like the uh, um, circulatory system or hearts, or you can go into the pulmonary system like lungs. And so from the CC, uh, ICD conversion, um, I'm able to then put in conditionals and uh, to like pull out only um, terminology or tokens that would fit, you know, restricted range um, through input of a medical expert, I can be like, okay, so the heart related engrams that we want should be within this range um and the lung related engrams should be in this range um and then it should output out some sort of uh, uh and then would then it would then we would catch those and put it into like a counter that's essentially what i'm doing well kevin uh, that is slightly uh, not intuitive like, yeah let's I, say yeah it's beautiful and yeah. it works okay mm -hmm. it, it obviously works yeah it's amazing the precision is great that's not very intuitive and it's quite sophisticated solution. That would be lovely. And soon, are you, can you please help to kind of put Kevin's input into simple words like, uh, for, for simple people like myself. <laughs> I, I, can, I can write something. I can write something up to make it a little more simple. Please, uh, Kevin, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, please write some summary because we need to include something yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in a yeah. notebook. And imagine yeah. that people that will look at this notebook, they're uh, they kind of like yeah. <laughs> not familiar with that at all. And we need yeah. to somehow yeah. explain them the concept. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. I, I understand yeah. what Kevin is saying, so I'll work with him. <laughs> yeah, I'll write something out. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys are brilliant. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but we, like, where I can imagine simple user trying to looking yeah. at you may CTI, whatever it is. I'm like, yeah. oh no, <laughs> like I'll skip <laughs> no, this. I'll, I'll yeah. skip this. Yeah. I mean, you you can test your um, explanations on me because I actually don't really have that much technical experience. Okay. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, Kevin, it will be really, really great if you work with uh, Guy Lerma, who is uh, helping us to combine all the code together. Yeah. I added, added you to, to a group when it's all happening, mm -hmm. so that you can kind of, you know, build the, the logical and sequent notebook together, and Guy Lerma is amazing at coding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, at least update on the long, uh, well, yeah, the long uh, by engrams. It's essentially done. I think I, I edited uh, that post. Um, it is somewhat shorter. Um, I think this must might be to. Uh, I think it might need to just expand the like the window of what I need to pull out of. I mean, it's pretty restricted just given from the MD expert, but um, I mean, it is what it is, and that's what he suggested. So that's what I used. Um, so that's what the inputs are. So I mean, any if. People want to take those engrams and the papers. They can they can do this so right now. Um, but I might potentially I'll talk to them again and see if I if I can expand it. If that makes sense. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, Yasen he worked on uh, some generalization, and he helps really helps me uh, to put all the things together. And he has an amazing and very structured uh, high level approach which is amazing uh, to, to help us to complete the task. And I hope that uh, uh, Yasin will be capable also, Gandhi, you know, to help to build the overall uh, reasonable uh, structure. Uh, and uh, just like, uh, do you have anything to add? Do you have questions? Anything you want to address to a community, that would be lovely because you are kind of more on that and I'm kind of more running after people, gathering things, trying to, you know, write something. I just want to add uh, one thing. Uh, I don't know if you discussed it because I joined a little uh, late. That, uh, f first of all, uh, with Kaggle, there is a second uh, round of submissions on uh, June 16th. And also, yeah. as Maya said, uh, we want to keep it running either way, with Kaggle or without. So <clears throat> maybe all of these things that we are discussing, it's too, it's too late now for the April 16th submission to, to implement everything, given the restructuring of the data and uh, the interface to search through and drill down through the papers. But are we considering the uh, June uh, submission for the same uh, task. We are considering to doing submission for the same task. What we should do, we do, we should do it Kaglish, stupid, okay. simple, beautiful, but reliable. Based on what we have, Greedy provided us with pretty good, good base for all the environmental factors. It's just to extract the best from the perfect she's done. Uh, we have Michael Wang, who is not on the call, but he actually submitted notebook that looks quite relevant for heart diseases. We had a submission for age, which has to be further filtered, but it looks pretty nice. We kind of, you know, we have a nice base to select from and make kind of, you know, solid submission. We are not bad in terms of results. No, we, we are not bad, but we are not. Uh, we don't have time to to integrate everything in the optimal to make it, way. To make it perfect, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> like forget about it at this but stage. if if we are if we are also looking for the June sixteenth, uh, uh, maybe we can do something much better. Uh, one does not exclude the other. Of course, we can submit now and then improve it for the for the next round. Uh, Indeed. Uh, if I understand correctly how the structure is. Th that's that's exactly. Like, yes, we will go for the next submission. And uh, the, even the highest vision is not to just make a Kaggle submission, but create a robust product that can help universities and health communities and researchers worldwide to access the database and use the knowledge fast. That's kind of like, you know, mo major vision. But okay. yeah, we are, running, we are running with a competition. And at the moment we should submit something that like kind of works at that stage, taking into consideration the limited time we had to achieve it. So first of all, it should be logical. Like I, I can share the structure kind of that I, as I see it. It should be like, uh, 
back, quick background, some explanation of, of methodology. I realized my mistake. We have, we have to comply the notebook first and then describe the methodology. Because while I was working on that, the methodology has changed already. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the last part to add. But then like background, methodology, engrams used, code, result of extractions, mentioning that instruction had some manual involvement and assessment, and here is the best papers, here is the links, please use it. Then we will have kind of an appendix. An appendix will have uh, beautiful pictures of a Gale task and visualization of Mike Honey. Within our submission, we want to have the quote produced by Mohammed Tviri, and what he suggests is to kind of, you know, he, he, he makes uh, visualizations uh, for um, and gram clouds, okay? And uh, there are some other visualizations, probably and gram clouds is good enough to include. So we should somehow implement that uh, into the code we have so far that Pranjalia and Kriti uh, created uh, by their like kind of com combined effort. This is super crucial before that combined code to include Kevin's code showing like this, uh, this sophisticated approach to engram uh, definitions, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we will have pretty solid document to show. Okay, good. W one thing that uh, I believe should be there and you didn't mention is that uh, if, if this thing is uh, scalable or better uh, extensible, say for example, a new data set comes tomorrow, including 5,000 uh, additional papers, what do we do? We run the whole process again? Obviously we pray. No, <laughs> no okay. so I think what uh, Brandon suggests is that I think currently the V6 and V7, V7 is just things that are not in V6. So if, we, if there is more things added, you just make another data set that would be like the, uh, the uh, non-intersection of V7, I guess. And so we would just, I guess, input the things that are left, left out, I suppose. Yes, but that's the technical aspect. The, the actual yeah. problem is what do you do with the papers? You will have uh, to find a new team to annotate and review the results uh, and yeah. go through the whole pipeline again. I'm thinking something in the line of uh, since if you have 50,000 papers and you have and you get 1,000 more, you should somehow be able to to interpolate the results for the new uh, since there are so few. At least suggest something at this stage. We cannot implement something interpolation. New, interpolation. No, no, interpolation is a wrong word. It's just saying uh, it's extrapolation. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, or probably interpolation. That's the correct word. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not about that. It's uh, it's more. It's it, at this point, like you should understand that it's present presenting the best within the given conditions. We we can mention the the further intention, and that's probably an important part of the document. That like we are going to scale it. We are going to do this and that, but. At this point, like, have you seen the submissions? Like, seriously, did you see the submissions? Yes, I've, seen, I've, I, seen, the, I've seen the other ones and, uh, okay, I understand what is. Uh, I can what. tell you what they are in a uh, very uh, simple but descriptive way. They are pointless. It's more like general statistics that pretty much do not help at all. They might be pretty. They might be kind of nice. If you drill down, you will not find materials you really want to read, etc. They're pretty much oh, mo most, most of them are descriptive statistics and some uh, nice visualizations. And what does it? What? How, what? What does it give you exactly? Like, I see, here is the task, and task is quite even though it's vague, vague, vague. Um, it's pretty concrete. Please help us to understand what's going in this field, this field, and this field. And kind of by providing, let's say, 10, top 10 papers that are super relevant to a topic, we really help 
the scientific community to access the knowledge and read and make a conclusion. Descriptive statistics, well, nice. You've coded, you did a nice pictures. It's all cool, it's pretty cuglish, but, but that's, not, that's not the aim, if that makes sense, right? Okay, so the main attention should be top 10 papers for each factor. Say we have uh, six uh, factors that we're dealing with now, or five, 50 papers. That's the uh, concentrated result, if I may say so. Yes, if unlike okay. the rest of, of submissions, yes, we don't yes, need okay. descriptive statistics because many people did that. But if no, descriptive, un unlike, we don't need. Yeah, but if unlike the rest, we do some representative works that help straight away to, to access the knowledge, we have pretty high chance to win because this is probably the most relevant requirement at the moment, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Okay. Do you agree with me, guys? Wait, so wait, so you want to not only like uh, have a list of like top 10 papers, but also to rank them as well? Not it's necessarily. A not, not necessarily oh. rank them. Okay. If you know the top 10 are this, uh, it's of minor significance to, to rank them 1 to 10. Okay, okay. So, like, I'm, um, I've already sent, like, a test uh, for population density. I've sent the annotation team, like, a spreadsheet of um, 95 links to papers. I think that's what we had. And um, asked them to... Um, like do a categorization, does this one, um, is this one a super relevant paper or is this one not? So. Mm -hmm. Have you seen, have you seen the Michael Swank uh, quote, this extraction on heart diseases? Uh, I haven't looked at it in detail yet. I was planning on looking at it after the call. But, but yeah, that's one has to be sent too, okay? Okay, yes. Amazing. Kriti, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, so I just, uh, about the ranking, uh, I had a, not a, not a suggestion, but I was just, I saw something on the group. Um, so I, I cannot pronounce the name, uh, but someone shared a great notebook for um, uh, I, Man, Mandelonsky. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, but they shared a notebook uh, for uh, the, for n-gram matching and finding relevant results. So if we can, I can't see the code anywhere. I can see some example results. So maybe that code could be used since it's sort of ready and off the shelf, but I don't know where the code is. Um, let's see, can you please? I, I'm looking to that now. Uh, okay, we, I, I will ask, I, I, we can ask in the... Yeah, because yeah, if it's not quite sure. one of us can uh, run it for the, for the filtered papers, for the key, keyword searched papers that we have, then we can find the most relevant ones amongst the smaller subsets. So it should take us, uh, it should take less time to run, I think. Uh, we, okay. we, you are talking about the example that has the animals, pig, mouse, cat, bird, this, uh, this part. Yeah, so, so it says it enables one to know which papers are most relevant based on the keyword. Okay, yes, we can. Uh... He put a link there. Well, what does this link lead to? Let me see. I can see Brandon's link. Also, you mean Mandel Kose uh, link? Mandel Kose link. Model can be downloaded from a Google Drive. Yeah, yeah, but then he gives you a link to go. It's not really. It's not the stage to deal. It's too late to deal with it now. We don't have time for that. Leave it. No, for later on. So, so that we don't go well, anywhere. Later on, I saved it. Yeah. I have it in a separate card. I, I, I included it into my uh, own summary. It's, it's with me. But okay. now okay. we just don't have time to process it. Sure. Okay. So let's kind of summarize. Uh, Kriti, we, need, we still need uh, all the keywords from you. Kevin, we need a description from you. We need Kevin and Guillermo to work together in order, in order to be able to create this part where we extract uh, engrams in a scientific way. Uh, and so it helps us with um, annotations and general structure. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm here to help you and anything you need and to support you and anything you need. And uh, wow, let's hope for the best. And I really like, it's kind of stupid and childish, but I really want to win this competition. (laughs) 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 Let's do it. (laughs) So guys, let's push and let's do it. (laughs) Thank you all so much. I'll talk to you. Let's jump in the general call. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.